shine for eternity. It's not happening. In my country, when my when I took uh, uh, charge of our government a year back, in the ten years preceding that, our total debt went up four times. The debt we had accumulated in sixty years, just in ten years, it went up four times. As a result. The total revenue we collected in one year, half of it went into debt servicing. How are we going to spend money on our human beings, 220 million people, when half the money is going into debt servicing? Because our country was plundered by the elites, the ruling elite. And easily they could get the money out. And when, when Mr. President, we located properties, in Western capitals bought by this money through corruption and money laundering, located the properties of these uh, corrupt leaders, we find it so difficult to retrieve it. That money, if we retrieve that money, we could spend on our human beings. But they are such, it's so difficult. The laws protecting these criminals We do not have the sort of money to have expensive lawyers and spend millions and millions of dollars. We need help from the rich countries. And Mr. President, it's critical. The, the rich countries must show political will. They cannot allow this to happen. How can, how can the poor countries spend money on human development, which the United Nations asks, SDG. How are we going to do it when this money can easily leave our countries? So, unless the rich countries intend to build walls to stop economic refugees coming, as we see right now, they must take action. They must take action now. We, they, it must be a deterrent. Ru corrupt ruling elites should not be able to take money out easily and park it into foreign bank accounts and into these properties abroad. And, and I never understand why. Why do we have these tax havens? Why is this allowed? Why shouldn't rich people pay taxes? Why is it legal to save, have these tax havens where you have these secret accounts? Because, you know, the world is changing. The, the population of the world is growing. Sooner or later, you're going to have a crisis. If the poor get poorer and the rich get richer, there is going to be a crisis sooner or later. So this is my second point. I hope that the United Nations takes a lead in this. It involves the IMF, the World Bank, Asian Development Bank. They must find a way of stopping this plunder of the developing world. My third point. My third point is Islamophobia. There are 1.3 billion Muslims in this world. There are millions of Muslims living in, in other countries, European countries, in the US, as minorities. Islamophobia since 9-11 has, has grown at a pace where it is alarming. Human communities live together. There should be understanding amongst them. But Islamophobia is creating a division. Muslim women wearing hijab, it's become an issue. It's become an issue in some countries. Hijab is some sort of a weapon. A woman can take off her clothes in countries, but she can't put on more clothes. How is this happening? Because of Islamophobia. And where, how did this Islamophobia start? After 9-11. And why did it start? Because certain Western leaders equated terrorism with Islam, Islamic terrorism. 
radical Islam. What is radical Islam? There is only one Islam, and that is the Islam we follow of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no other Islam. Radical Islam, Islamic terrorism, what message did they send to people in the West? And why is there Islam, uh, Islamophobia? How is a person in New York, in the Midwest, in the US, in European capital, how is he?